Hi, this is Benendorf, and welcome back to another episode of Victoria 2, Heart of Darkness. As we last left off, we had just finished off Siam once and for all, and we'll have quite a bit of infamy to bleed off. So, um, let's get started. First things first, going to move this army here in Homeland, or in the Home Islands, to join up with the Homeland Protection Front. And let's see what else we need to do. We almost have the integral rail system finished. Uh, we have enough to upgrade another port to fifth. And let's do another one on the homeland. Or the home islands, rather. All right, and let's see. Wow, plenty of clerks in Kanto. So let's see if... There's still space for a few more clerks here, by the looks of it. However, we really would like to up, to finish up some more bureaucrats, or focus on bureaucrats with some of these, and turn some of these provinces into states. Southern Zahili is still slowly making progress, although not nearly as quickly as I would like. Shandong doesn't quite have the Japanese population to make it worthwhile to spend anything there. Same on Manchuria. With most of these. Um, let's see. I'm going to drop the uh, focus in, not in Kyushu, in Kanto and switch it over to Nakhon Ratshishima, or what, however you pronounce that. Uh, they should be able to gain... They have plenty of Japanese population and no bureaucrats, or very few bureaucrats by the looks of it, so hopefully we'll be able to convert some of those Japanese into bureaucrats, which will then uh, get us to that 1% necessary, and we'll be able to turn them into a state. But enough about that, let's get started also going to go ahead and disable some of these rally points well no just the one in Southeast Asia I suppose and Bhopal has gone bankrupt because somebody has to better them than me I suppose and the economy shaking out but hopefully we'll shake out and make money for everybody again Once this rail system gets done, capitalists will spend plenty of money on that, which should, oh, and there we go, which will boost our production, should boost our industrial power pretty nicely. We're still sitting at, well, we're at about 750 points back from France now, but we're closing in on the UK when it comes to industrial power, and it really is a two-horse race at this point. We also have twice the military of pretty much anybody else in the entire world. Oh, hit the wrong button there. So military power. Russia would probably declare war on us if we broke over the infamy limit, but they may be the only ones. For the moment, I'm going to let infamy bleed off a little bit. I might try and take a little bit of land over here near uh, Saudi Arabia, or might let it bleed down to 14, at which point I can take a whole state from China, which would be very valuable. But for the meantime, hmm, what to research, what to research. I'm going to go with investment banks. I don't really need the tax efficiency, but lower factory cost is always a plus. And it'll take us about six months. And the Golden Islands have another failed factory. They aren't big enough to really make any money. Even though... Do we have any... No, there's... I don't know where the rest of the Bonin Islands are. Or rather, who owns the rest of them. However, I just realized that I could build another naval base here. And disloyal regiment, lazy natives and all that. Looks like Russia owns the rest of the Bonin Islands, such as it is. What little is there. Anyways, 
keeping it rolling. Uh, new store in another state, so more farming efficiency. Always a plus, though I'm more interested in factories at this point. I really need to have that industrial power keep raise, rising so that I will be able to grasp the first place spot. We have plenty of leadership, so you're going to create an admiral and two generals. And more disloyal regiments, so lazy natives and all of that. Oh, and we have another naval base, or another state to expand naval bases in, so I'm going to start on that. As well as expanding the one over here in Egypt, since I've been neglecting them. Egypt is, in fact, still uncivilized. So, at some point, I might kick them out of my sphere and take some more land. Although, honestly, with the amount of infamy I keep accruing, I'm not sure I'll ever get around to that. I'm not sure that I'll ever really need to. And a tractor in another state. We are truly jumping into the modern world. Slowly, well, France is increasing it as, almost as fast as we are. Let's, let's look at these armies. I want to upgrade them to until they are at 84. 4,000 so that I can put a unit, an airplane unit, which will increase the recon ability as well as a tank ability or a tank unit, which will raise siege efficiency up to 100% and will bring the total unit size to 90,000. So to do that, it means I will need another five, yeah, another five units. So I'm thinking two infantry, a guard, and two artillery may be the way to go. So let's get started on that. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven armies, so I will need seven guards. One, two, three, four, five, six and seven guard and then we'll need uh, 14 infantry so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen and fourteen and then we'll need 14 artillery. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. And I will rally point there. That way it'll be easier to move them and 14. So I'll let all those units build and then reinforce all these armies. Might push up against the supply limit in some of these places, but I will... Oh no, synthetic polymers aren't for a while yet. So, But I should still be okay. Supply limit's 104 in the plains and 80... Yeah, 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 yeah. At least in my land I'll have absolutely no problems. So, probably worthwhile. And with that big of armies, nobody can stand against me, pretty much. Oh my, it looks like China is being knocked down to down to size by Yunnan and another of their sub-states. Or actually, quite the opposite. China is trying to take some land from Yunnan. Well, that will... we will... Try and keep a little bit of an eye on that, but China expanding is not something we would like. Although, it, I guess it just means that we will have to get in there and defeat them sooner. There's a new store has arrived. I really wish there would be some way to get an acquire state on them for cheaper. But for the moment, I am going to send Yunnan some war subsidies to help them with this war as well as Punjab, and 
king high. Hopefully the money will keep them being able to run their armies and buy supplies, which is which would be ideal because I really don't want China to win this. Oh, and Colombia just went bankrupt. Probably because they are at war and can't afford it. it looks like uh, Argentina? Yeah, the UK is trying to take some land uh, from Argentina. How, how noteworthy. And it looks like our supply throughput for the Navy has increased beyond what we have built. The All those level 5 naval bases are starting to take their toll, so to speak, in the, but in a good way. They are starting to give us just enough supply so that we may expand our army again soon. So I'm going to continue to expand those. And a new tractor in another state. It's international crisis, but nobody was interested. Nitroglycerin in another state. And Seoul lost another factory. Hopefully the capitalists will destroy it and replace it, but I'm not sure if they do that. In the past, they always leave one closed, which is a little annoying. And uh, Fordism, so increased airplane and automobile. Uh, the in increase to airplane and automobile production. And it looks like the industry is starting to stall a little bit, but we have so many factories being built, that should be temporary. And stores in another state. Enough money, so I'm going to expand another naval base. If I can find where to do so, there we go. And investment banks just finished. So, um, because I just want enough to pretty much tip us over into 1900, I'm going to do late classical theory. The input efficiency tech decreases nice anyways. Oh my, that is quite a lot of additional taxes we got from investment banks and these armies are slowly starting to be built I will have to combine and separate them once they're all finished mm, the Chinese are getting very very ballsy here uh, in the meantime, while we're waiting for infamy to tick off, I'm going to try and make friends with some of these great powers so that perhaps I will be able to use them against France at one point. So, increasing relations with Prussia. And I'm never going to be friends with Russia, but the U.S. is, of course, a very close friend. And I'm going to try and get, I mean, I might as well try to get the UK and Russia to be friends with me. If I can get another great power ally, I would be able to take France on with relative ease. Ooh, first to the pole. We should definitely outfit an expedition. No question about it. We need to be the first. Oof, poor USA just went bankrupt. Why would that be? I'm not really sure actually, but it is unfortunate. I'm still allied with them, so it doesn't really make a difference to me, but sucks for them, I suppose. And it looks like this war of China's is going quite well, unfortunately. And late classical theory finished. All right, and so we still have another month. I'm actually just going to let that uh, the research points run up a little bit to get a head start on the new research that will be available at the turn of the century. And there we go. Our upper house rearranged ever, ever so slightly and a little bit of extra permanent prestige for what little that's worth. 
However, the most valuable thing is that we now have anti-rationalism, which if we can get first, we might be able to get a nice big chunk of prestige, plus, of course, all that extra research. So it'll take a little over a year to finish it, but is certainly worthwhile. And let's see what needs to be expanded at this point. More of these naval bases. I can expand two at this point. So there we go. Local railroad shares. I guess I'll just let everything gain a level of railroad, but they may be done already anyways. So welcome to the 1900s. 20th century has begun. Expedition has returned without success. We're going to keep sending people there until we are the first to the poll. Ah, and a new newspaper. Denmark is afraid of the USA. And there have been some inventions, disasters with Mount Vesuvius has erupted, and a mountain in Martinique. And that's it. Oof, cultural struggle, so we're going to bide our time. Let's see. Oh, looks like we've been pulled out of this, or Romania has been pulled out of our sphere, so we're going to just add them on back. And that's the only one really of note right now. Except that we are getting very close to being able to, well, except, there we go. Russia kicked us out of Sweden again, unfortunately. And tensions dissipate in our very large province in southern Zahili. Speaking of which, let's see how they're doing on becoming a real state. 64% now. They're making progress. And very slow progress in... Nakhon Rachima, which if the progress doesn't speed up, I'm going to remove that national focus. It's not worth just sitting there. It would be much more valuable elsewhere, I imagine. Okay. And our armies are almost finished. Once they're done, I will split them up. Let's... Since we're making so much, I am going to drop taxes on the rich by two and one for the middle class. So let's see where else needs to have naval bases expanded. Perhaps out here in the Pacific. Alright. I'm still making enough that I'll be able to expand naval bases fairly often anyways. And uh, King Hai has dropped out of the war with China, it looks like. Saxony just went bankrupt. All those little German miners have been having very poor luck. And another newspaper has shown up, which another national disaster, or natural disaster, as well as Cope's Skull. But other than that, you know, prices of airplanes, since there's a lot of demand and very little supply, has gone up. So that's all of that. And second Olympic Games, definitely going to attend for the extra prestige, plus some extra friendliness towards some of our great powers, or some of the other great powers that could one day be allies. Like Prussia could very possibly be an ally soon. So we're going to increase their relations. USA we're still friends with, although it's dropping a little bit due to the CB on them. And UK, going to increase relations. They just would eventually like to have more than one great power ally. Tensions dissipate in Laos, so decreasing militancy, which isn't a huge problem. Looking at rebels, we still have Japanese communists is pretty much the only noteworthy rebels, and still not that big of rebels. So even if they rose, it wouldn't be the end of the world. We have enough money, so let's find somewhere else to expand the naval base again. If we can, at least. Where? There we go. Nope. Edo, I think. Yep, there we go. Can't believe that wasn't the first one I expanded. Realist art, an extra one whole prestige. Meaningless. Hooray. 
but we're now at 760 behind France, so we are catching up. And that is very important. On industry alone, we are making progress. Since it's the turn of the century, once we finish anti-rationalism, we should be able to research some new ships and some new, uh, some new military techs, which will help our score go up as well. And I'm going to accept consciousness over population drop in this case. Really want to avoid population drop wherever possible. And exhibition disappears again, so I'm going to send more men up to the pole. Of course, an election's now beginning, so I'm going to try and get interventionalism back in power, I suppose. If they don't, if liberals win again, I'm okay with that, but I would prefer the conservatives. So we're going to choose residency. Our literacy is doing very well. Just a random aside, choosing pro-military, although that also supports the liberal faction. So the liberal faction probably will be the ones to win here. Very close on anti-rationalism now. 11th of January. I'm going to choose pluralism, which also supports the liberal faction. So liberal faction will probably stay in power, but th they've done pretty well so far. I can't complain. In worst case scenario, I'll switch over to conservative faction and close down some of these factories, which I might do anyways after this, even if it might raise a little bit of militancy. And anti-rationalism has finished, so what to do next? Shift work and electrical power generation. Oof, electrical power generation is excellent. That one needs to be one of my top priorities. As well as steam turbine ships. I'm pretty much any of these techs here. Hmm. Decisions, decisions. All right, I'm going to go with steam turbine ships first. Start getting, or create the ability to build dreadnoughts, and then we'll get through some of these army techs, or maybe electrical power generation next, just because it's such a good tech. Right, pro military. And we now have rubber, which should be of some use. Infamy is also still slowly bleeding off. Once it gets down to 14, I will certainly declare war on China and try and take one of their uh, states. Because they have huge populations and will now be full states. Going with pro military in this election event. Nobel Prize has been awarded to us, so a nice bit of prestige. Considering that we are pretty much at the cutting edge of technology, that's not a big surprise. Residency, uh, checking on population. Southern Zahili keeps slowly getting closer to becoming a state. And Shandong is getting there, although slowly. I am going to drop this focus and move it to Shandong, see if perhaps it will be a little more effective now than it was earlier. Here's hoping anyways. Oof. Alright, I need to focus a little more on Romania. I don't think I'm ever going to get Sweden out, but I will lower their priority to 2 and raise Romania's to 3, at least temporarily, so I can keep Russia out. And going with pro military again. There we go. So I'm going to decrease the opinion, or not decrease the opinion, expel advisors of Russia. And now I'm going to drop it back to two pips with three on Sweden. New store in another state, so additional, or some more additional farming efficiency there. Lowered factory costs just showed up. Which is, of course, very nice. Choosing pro militancy, and that probably will be the last election event. International crisis. Well, failed to. No one was interested. Yep, the liberals won the vote again. Looks like the conservatives are just a little below when it comes to imperialist, conservative, and nationalist together. 
But that suits me. Liberals have been doing fine. Although, honestly, I'm going to switch over to conservative, which caused a little bit of militancy. I will move them. I will move it back to liberal, which should drop that cons militancy again. But I need to close out some of these factories oh. and free up some new space for new factories so that the capitalists will actually build them. Instance, Seoul should get a new factory pretty much instantly. Or so I would expect. Either way, uh, we now have enough money, so need to expand another naval base here somewhere. There's one. There's another. Alrighty. We are getting plenty of supply for our ships, which means that once steep turbine comes through, I will probably build another big fleet with dreadnoughts instead of battleships. So, in the meantime, I'm going to spread out our current fleets to sort of be ready to project power if necessary. And it looks like all of our armies are done. So, it's moving three artillery that are down here in Southeast Asia to join the first army. I will also need one guard and two infantry. So I'm going to peel off one guard, put it on the transport, and send it over here to King Dao, which I'm going to move this army uh, away from the coast so that it will be a little easier to split up units. There we go, and I'm going to move them over to Southeast Asia to join up with the rest of the army there. And in the meantime, I'm going to split off one, two, one, two. I'm going to split off these armies and send them to reinforce where they're supposed to be anyways, and then just move the guards piecemeal pretty much. So this will make it a little easier to uh, separate these or to reinforce the armies in the way I would like. So you're going to move the remaining 12,000 that will be sitting here. All of them to King Dao really. And I think they were all finished building. So, transport fleet. Yes, we are the first to the North Pole and has given us 115 prestige, which should close the gap pretty, yep, now it's at 600. The gap's about 600, so we are closing in, albeit slowly. Oh, I did not need all of that artillery, just two units. My bad. So there we go. That army is fully reinforced. This army is... will soon be fully reinforced. And these three armies over here just need one guard each. So in fact, I'm going to move the transport fleet... Hmm. Well, we have, we just have the two armies left, it looks like. And then, of course, moving all the guards. So, we'll just take the quick hop across the Korean Bay. But, uh, disloyal regiment, lazy, lazy natives and all of that. So, let's, oh, I shouldn't have remerged those, whoops. But splitting them back again. So on the ship, on the ship. So moving them back over to uh, Manchuria. 
pause to one. So just a very quick hop. So we're going to spread them out into the armies. And it looks like we're going to need one more artillery. Where would it be? Oh, that's right, here in the Philippines. So I'm going to go pick that up very quickly. And these are the units that will be in the Homeland Protection Front anyways. So, shifting them. Moving over to pick up in, North, or in Manchuria. And then we'll shift everybody home. And then, of course, we'll bring the guards and split them off. The steam turbine ships just finished. So I am going to do electrical power generation next. It's just such a good tech. I really need to. But after that, I will do bolt action rifles, infiltration, all of these great military or land military techs. Let's get on the boat and combine, get back on the boat and lower capital costs or, or lower factory costs, I should say. I'm going to go ahead and, oh, I cannot lower the taxes on the poor without dropping the income significantly. Let's see if there's anywhere else that can be upgraded at this point. That one's level five, that one's mid-upgrade. Ooh, Kyushu needed one. And let's see up here, there's another one. Plus, these are all in the midst of being upgraded already. I should have one, there we go, Kiribati was still at level 3, what a shame. So here's this army, I'm going to combine it and then pull out the 15,000 that I will send here to the Homeland Protection Front and move the rest over to each of the individual armies that need upgrading or need reinforcing, I should say. There we go. So as soon as our infamy is low enough to make war once more, it we will be armed and ready. Romanticist literature gives us a tiny amount of prestige. And then these armies are all now going to be, or will be reinforced. 84,000 each. These are quite the force of arms that I will have available to me. They should be able to, uh, to successfully occupy an enemy land without any problem very, very quickly as well as destroy any army that pretty much anyone in the world will throw at me. So the Japanese army is once again one to very much be feared. Additional rubber is shown up, which might be valuable once the demand for rubber increases a little bit more. And we're still trying to keep uh, Russia out of Romania. So I'm gonna go ahead and raise in the priority to high we might just kick Russia out of Sweden, though. But anyways, uh, I'm going to stop there for today. Upper House just got rearranged a little bit to increase the liberals. And we are now, factories are a little cheaper, and we will be able to construct dreadnoughts. So uh, thanks for watching, and check back soon for more Victoria 2, Heart of Darkness.